Hey everybody, my name is Michael and I am here to talk about Charles Bonnet syndrome. Um, in Phantoms of the Brain by Ramachandran, he talks about uh, James Thurber, who is a cartoon artist and he gets CBS um, in his 30s. Uh, so Charles Bonnet was a Swiss scientist who um, recorded complex visual hallucinations that his grandfather was having when um, he had double cataract surgery. Um, however, CBS was not actually coined um, a disease um, until 1967, which was done by uh, Georges de Morsier. Um, and he was a Swiss scientist who uh, studied neurodevelopment disorders. Um, Morsier believed that CBS was directly related to neurodegeneration as seen in diseases like Parkinson's, um, Alzheimer's, and peduncular hallucinosis. And he believes that, believed that the conditions occurred in uh, the elderly and had no uh, correlation to ocular pathology. So, um, Unfortunately, he was never able to prove his hypothesis. And then in 1989, Golden Rabbins um, described visual hallucinations in CBS as stereotyped, formed, complex, and persistent. Um, they also believed that people knew that the hallucinations were not actually real. Um, and they also believed that ocular pathology was not a criteria. So some of the characteristics be behind CBS that they can be uh, simple or complex hallucinations, simple being just shapes or patterns and complex being, um, you know, people's faces, uh, actual people, uh, trees or um, animals, things of that nature. Um, the hallucinations can last for seconds or hours. Um, they can either have a negative effect, a positive effect, or simply no effect whatsoever. Um, and also half of the patients have the hallucinations in black and white and half in color. Um, in addition, there is actually no increased risk uh, with increased age uh, regarding CBS. So um, some interesting studies. Uh, one found that visual acuity loss was not actually a requirement for uh, CBS. Um, and then in another, it found that there was an association between age-related macular degeneration and colored visual hallucinations. So basically, um, based on the uh, reduced input, uh, the activation in the color area resulted in color hallucinations. This was proven through fMRI as the color area of the visual association cortex. Um, and that that area remained hyperactive in CBS patients with macular degeneration. Um, in addition, there was another study that was done and it showed that in ganglion cell loss and glaucoma, um, people with CBS had, had it without an acuity loss, but in AMD, the loss of the central retinal ganglion cells led to an acuity loss. Um, so some neurological disorders associated with CBS are Parkinson's, um, which involves the widespread brainstem changes in various neurotransmitter systems uh, beyond our substantia Niagara. Defects in the visual pathway um, are due to dopamine deficiency in the retina and central pathways. Um, the vis visual hallucinations occur uh, because they're attributed to decreased vision loss, cognitive impairments, um, as well as some dopaminergic medications. So peduncular hallucinosis is most closely related to CBS. Um, it is vascular in nature, and the hallucinations occur as a result of lesions in the midbrain and thalamus. Um, it doesn't only involve our midbrain and the surrounding area. It's also associated with several other uh, central nervous system pathologies. It's also been uh, found sometimes in MS um, due to ocular and cerebral manifestations. And in epilepsy, um, the hallucinations typically are simple and very brief, um, 
intracranial EEGs have shown that there is excitation in the visual association cortex. However, when the hallucinations become complex, the posterior parietal and temporal association cortex are more active. Um, so some of the theories behind CBS is the irritative theory, which um, states that irritative lesions in seizures and migraines send abnormal input to visual cortices. The visual cortices then generate excitatory discharges to the occipital and temporal lobes, which are interpreted as hallucinations. Then there's the release phenomenon, which states that any deprivation to visual system interferes with normal uh, circuitry, which inhibits our visual cortex activity. As a result, inappropriate excitation occurs, which causes the hallucinations. And last, uh, deafferentation theory or sensory deprivation theory um, is a loss of visual input, which leads to change in excitability of our visual cortex. When the visual input is removed, spontaneous neuronal discharge in our visual cortex occurs, which creates excitability and it creates hallucinations. Um, several factors account for this excitability, uh, the first being the presence of increased vesicles, um, which then increase the neurotransmitters that are released in our uh, presynaptic neuron. In addition, uh, it's also thought that prolonged activity occurs uh, due to the increase in receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. And last, um, that our visual systems are uh, have high plasticity and that could cause um, new axons to sprout in damaged areas, um, which could cause a potential reorganization of our receptive fields, making our neurons more sensitive. Um, so basically, in conclusion, <laughs> there's a lot of information about CBS, but there's no specific um, diagnosis that fits every mold of person. Um, so it can include visual hallucinations, um, partial or full insight that the hallucinations are not real. There um, typically is an absence of psychological disorder, um, preserved intellectual function, and um, no lessened visual acuity. And of course, there's no specific age range. Um, so basically, compared to what Ramachandran said, um, he, he was on the right path, but still a little off as far as... Um, what is actually going on, and unfortunately, we still don't really know what's going on. Um, so a lot more studies need to be done, um, potentially using uh, DET scans or um, fMRIs, uh, you know, just to really understand what's, what's going on, the activity um, when people experience CBS. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed.